What up guys, it's Jay here from TV Time with Jay, and welcome back to another review, and this time we are here to review a new Netflix original animated series by the same studio who did the amazing Castlevania series. And this series is, of course, Blood of Zeus Season 1. Now, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of all eight episodes of Blood of Zeus. So do yourself a favor, watch all eight episodes. They're 30 minutes apiece, so uh, shouldn't be too long of a watch. But once you finish that, come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Also... Be prepared, this video is probably going to be a little long because I am going to have several little, like, stop tangents talking about Greek mythological fun facts because I fucking love Greek mythology and uh, I'm definitely going to stop and be like, did you guys know that this happened actually in Greek mythology or did you guys know that this is actually pretty accurate because, uh, you know, that is actually how the story goes. That's going to happen a lot, so uh, if you're not interested in Greek mythology, well, one, you shouldn't be watching this show because this is literally all about Greek mythology. It's essentially like Greek drama Game of Thrones. And it's pretty fucking awesome. So, let's talk about it. So essentially, this show, as per the title, uh, centers around a bastard son of Zeus. Big shocker, because like 95 to 99 percent of the uh, Greek epic protagonists are, you know, children of Zeus. So, yeah, no shit. He's a son of Zeus. Join the ever-expanding supermassive club. And I like the fact that the other Greek gods actually talk shit about the fact that Zeus can't keep it in his pants. It's pretty hilarious. But anyway, so our main dude is this guy, Heron. Um, and so he lives in this village he's got kind of the Jon Snow complex everybody treats him like a bastard uh, calls his mother a whore they live on the outskirts of this you know small rinky dink village the only person that helps them out is this kind yet somehow mysterious nebula nebulous old man gee I wonder who this wise old kind man could possibly be we'll get to that um but anyway, we find out in uh, this version of Greek mythology, after the Titans were slain, they weren't actually thrown into Tartarus. Essentially, their blood birthed an entirely different species of creatures known as giants. And then the giants ended up, you know, trying to do what the Titans failed to do and take down the Olympians. And boy, they almost did. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, Zeus was able to have Hephaestus fashion a container and send Hermes to uh, begin his job, which is to uh, start collecting their souls. Because, fun fact for you guys, Hermes in Greek mythology is actually the person or the god uh, who is the god of travelers, thieves, and safe passage to the underworld. Hermes collects souls and leads them to the ferryman who basically fairies dead souls across the river Styx where they are to await punishment or bliss in either Elysium or the fields of punishment uh, three guesses on which one's the bad one so yeah that's pretty interesting I like how they incorporated that and they do that a lot all throughout this series which you know as a huge Greek mythology nut I am all about but anyway so after the Giants souls were captured and sealed away in the underworld not exactly Tartarus but the underworld and guarded by a super awesome badass Hephaestus Automata uh, they end up like you know living in peace with humans for a long time and eventually a giant carcass actually washes up on land and uh, they end up kind of corrupting a nearby person uh, to eventually eat of their flesh and then eating of the giant's flesh basically turned this man into uh, what this world refers to as a demon which is basically you know a demonic looking humanoid creature that is super vicious strong and you know hates humans so you know you're run-of-the-mill demon 
And basically, this entire kind of conflict is humans versus demons versus giants uh, and kind of the gods trying to balance uh, their involvement, whether they should directly interfere with mortal lives or they should just kind of chill and observe because apparently Zeus has made this rule that if mankind is to one day inherit the earth, you know, when we're gone, we have to let them stand on their own. But as we know, Zeus is one to uh, frolic and gallivant. And let me tell you, I was very surprised that they went like full accurate with Zeus. Oh, I wouldn't say full accurate. There are a couple things with Zeus that I was like, huh, that's different. So with Zeus here, uh, he obviously impregnated Heron's mother. And he did so by pulling the classic Zeus move. First, he shapeshifts into an animal and watches her bathe, unbeknownst to her. And then, he shapeshifts into her husband and, you know, proceeds to do the horizontal mambo and uh, unbeknownst to her until she eventually finds out because she's like, I realize you're not my husband because my husband's an abusive asshole and you're actually kind of nice. Which is a weird but also welcome change of pace because usually, you know, more often than not, unless you're talking the Disney version, Zeus is a uh, big practitioner of the big scary R word that, you know, I cannot mention on YouTube. So, yeah, I'm glad that wasn't incorporated in there because, I mean, sure, it would have been more accurate, but I would have been way more uncomfortable. So, good for you. Plus, it helps to earn Zeus a little bit more sympathy points, but I also do like that they constantly point out that Zeus is a uh, cheating asshole. He's a fuckboy, as he always is. Zeus is the king of the fuckboys, and that's kind of how they portray him in this. And again, people call him out on his bullshit, which I appreciate. Um, and one of the things that I really, really enjoy about this show in particular, uh, if you're familiar with theater, storytelling, or just Greek mythology in general, you should at least have kind of like a cursory knowledge of Greek drama and how Greek drama works and how like the different pol uh, political plays and gods getting involved with certain mortals and like assisting certain mortals. I mean, that's literally all the Odyssey was, was kind of gods uh, like placing bets on different mortal sides and like, you know, seeing which god's side would win first and that's essentially what happens here with the, the divide between Zeus's forces and Hera's forces which by the way I absolutely love and hate the depiction of Hera that they have in the show and the fact that I hate her means that she is done right which is what I love about it because Hera has always all throughout every form of Greek mythological fiction, whether it's the actual myths or stuff like Percy Jackson. I, you can't see it there because it's probably out of focus, but I've got all oh, the entire Percy Jackson series, read those as a kid too. Um, Hera is always a bitch. Uh, she's got big petty energy and boy, her petty levels are off the charts in this one. I mean, she literally like made it so that the woman that Zeus slept with and impregnated was killed by her other son. That's wild. Her son that she was forcibly separated from after he was born because Zeus, you know, whisked them away to safety from Hera. That's crazy to me. Oh my god. Hera was such a conniving, manipulative bitch, and I love it because that is how she's supposed to be, man. Like, to bring back the Game of Thrones analogy, Hera was most definitely, like, a combo of, like, a Cersei Lannister and an Olena Tyrell. Absolute just bad bitch with big, petty energy, and I loved it. I loved it every second she was on screen and I wanted her to get hers so bad. Oh my god. 
Heron himself, uh, he's kind of just your generic protagonist, to be honest with you. Don't really have much to say about him. He's got, you know, the uh, bastard son, daddy issue, uh, starter pack, you know, no one in the town likes me, uh, I never had a dad to raise me, oh, you know, the only person that ever loved me was my mom, and now my mom is dead, look at me, I'm sad, edgy, and depressed, but look, I found friends along the way, yay, I have something to fight for now, oh wait, I finally get close to my parental figure, and we bond, and we actually have a moment, and like, I, I think we can actually start a you know, positive functioning relationship. Oops, dad dries tragic death. Yeah, pretty much the uh, generic, you know, bastard son edgy starter pack for a main character. Uh, not to say that Heron is bad. I feel like he fits the archetype like a glove. And, you know, for what he is, you know, he serves the story well for its purpose, for sure. I'm just saying there isn't really anything nuanced to say about Heron. Um, there are some other really cool characters in here because, um, you know, just like Castlevania, they have like a trio kind of, or I guess a, a quartet because there are four main characters that kind of follow the story besides, of course, Seraphin, who is, you know, Heron's brother. So there's, of course, Heron and then um, his friends he meets along the way are the Grand Archon Alexi, who is absolutely awesome. This chick is super badass, and, like, you know, I appreciate that, like, you know, technically Heron rescued her the one time, but actually most of the time, she rescued Heron, especially in the beginning. She is pretty great. Uh, they refer to her as an Amazon, but I don't know if they actually confirm if she is an Amazon, uh, we did see visions of her parents, and one of them looks a lot like, uh, um, you know, uh, mythological depictions of Queen Hippolyta, so she might actually be a daughter of, an, um, you know, the Queen of Amazons. Who knows? You know, that could the Amazon thing could just be, like, referring to the fact that she's a female warrior, uh, but that's also very common in Spartan culture, and she looked to be the daughter of a king. Uh, we all know she's not Athenian because Athenians were notoriously gay and notoriously sexist. Not that, you know, the gay part is bad, but, you know, uh, I'm just saying they were notoriously sexist. And also, like, even though, like, the um, whole messing around with uh, younger men was, uh, you know, a welcomed practice, they still kind of heavily judge those people. Uh, but we're not here to talk about ancient Greek culture. We're here to talk about a fictional show set in that ancient Greek culture. So anyway, we get to see a pretty decent showcase of a lot of the major gods that most people know. We get to see Ares be Ares, and like, it's accurate to who he is. He's an arrogant, hothead, you know, I smash things real good. I like to punch people. And also, Ares is Hera's favorite son, so it makes perfect sense that he's a total mama's boy and follows whatever Hera says and always snitches on Zeus because, you know, he's always on Hera's side. I also like that they really nailed down the individual, like, god dynamics pretty well. Like, for example, like I said, Ares is a total mama's boy. Hephaestus couldn't be bothered, and he doesn't really care about Hera either, because Hera was a bitch to him, too, because right when she gave birth to him, he came out a little deformed and ugly looking, so because he looked so ugly, she literally threw him off the mountain, which made him even uglier, because he, like, hit his head and got even more deformed on the way out, and that's why he walks with a limp. So, yeah, Hera's a total fucking bitch. Um... So Hephaestus could not give two shits about her. Uh, the only other two gods that play um, any sort of a role in this are uh, Poseidon um, and like Apollo. Oh, as well as Hermes, so three. Apollo and Hermes, uh, they uh, kind of like are on Zeus's side. They're the good sons, quote unquote. And they also sympathize with Heron because they too are 
you know, bastard children of Zeus who, you know, their mothers were constantly harassed and antagonized by Hera as well when they were born. So they totally get, you know, Heron's perspective and point of view because Hera is a bitch. I'm going to keep saying that all throughout this video. If that's the one thing about Greek mythology that you learn from this, you need to learn that Hera is a bitch. So, yeah. Um, eventually, Hera, of course, manipulates uh, Seraphin to take revenge on Zeus. She pins the events of the tragic circumstances of his life on Zeus, which is a half-truth, which is what Hera is really good at using. And it works for a little bit, but then... Of course, it backfires because Seraphin is like, well, why do I need to be a pawn of these gods? I could just take over the world. Fuck the age of gods. It will just start the age of man now, or at least the age of Seraphin. And so, of course, you know, he works with her to free the giants, but then, you know, he betrays Hera, and then the giants also betray Hera, and then, you know, she realizes, oh shit, I'm, over, I'm in over my head. Zeus swoops in to help her. Um, and then she realizes that she still loves him just in time for him to die. Um, and a big epic fight happens, of course. Um, and eventually, Heron, as you do in these, you know, epic hero's journey, you know, Greek myth stories, he finally comes into his power after learning to let go of his anger. And he is able to channel the thunder himself. And it looks like at the end, he may have earned himself a spot on Olympus. I mean, they are short a Thunderer, so who knows where that goes. Overall, I really enjoyed this show. I thought it was a blast. The action is really good. Um, like I said, there are a lot of really interesting little references to different, uh, you know, Greek mythological stories. Uh, Chiron is featured as a side character. Chiron the Wise, Chiron the Teacher, trainer of heroes. He trained Perseus, Heracles... Um, you know, Achilles, all of the big major Greek heroes, Odysseus as well, which, by the way, I know this is a small, super nerdy nitpick, but I always hate it when shows that are explicitly Greek, and they show you're in Greece, and you're focusing on Greek mythology, talk about Heracles, and they call him Hercules. Hercules is the Roman version you guys Heracles is his name in Greek he changed his name from Asterios or you know yeah I think it's Asteros um, to Heracles as a way to appease Hera who tried to kill him as a baby too by the way um, so, yeah, his name is Heracles. I'm sorry, I, I had to say it. That was annoying me. Like, it was only mentioned once, but, man, I was slightly triggered. Not gonna lie. Uh, I know, it's a, it's a small thing to get annoyed about, but, like, it happens so often. It's just so annoying. But, anyway, really enjoyed it. The action is top-notch. Uh, the drama was really well done. Sure, a lot of it was predictable if you know the structure of, like, Greek stories, but I think that's cool because it really captures the feeling of Greek drama and a Greek myth. It was really, really well done. I cannot recommend it enough, and I really hope it does get a season two. Um, obviously, there's going to be a power vacuum now that Zeus is dead, and it looks like they may be featuring Hades as the next bad guy, which, honestly, I have a bone to pick with because Hades in traditional Greek mythology is never depicted as an evil god or, you know, a vengeful or vindictive god like Hera is or pretty much any of the other gods are. Hades is just kind of the brother that got the short end of the stick and kind of just does his job but you know is kind of lonely so he ends up stealing a wife which you know is still pretty bad but like he's nowhere near as bad as the others man. Y'all know what Poseidon did to Medusa. You know what Zeus has done to every other woman in Greece like 98% of the ancient Greek female population, maybe 99.9 .9 if we're being real honest. Uh, so yeah, Hades being a bad guy I feel like is really cliche, 
but uh, we'll see what they do with it. Uh, overall, I personally really enjoyed it. I had a blast with it. Let me know all your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, would you like to see a season two? Tell me in the comments down below. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. In the outro card, I will leave linked a video YouTube and series algorithm that you might like, as well as a link to my most recent uploads so you can get a feel for what I have to offer here on this channel. Uh, in case you do want to subscribe, because I do cover a bunch of other great TV shows as well, and the fall TV season is really starting to get into gear, so definitely check that out. Also, I'm recording this on Halloween, so if you're watching this the day uh, of recording, happy Halloween, and if this uh, ends up going up later, Feliz Dia de los Muertos, because it is going to be November 1st if it goes up after midnight after recording this. So, you know, enjoy that. And hopefully, I'll catch you in the next review. But until then, peace.